session uh, comes from Antonio Lucrezio. Um, he is a PhD student in um, Davide Scaramuzzi's lab, and um, I guess that's the robotics and perception group. So, um, uh, yeah, and I guess he's, I think he's going to talk about uh, drone, uh, yes. the use of deep learning with drones. So, Antonio, over to you. Thanks for coming and look forward to your talk. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation, Mark. And uh, uh, yes, you're right. I'm gonna speak about drones, show a lot of videos, uh, and uh, yes, ho hopefully teach something, but also entertain uh, whoever is uh, attending this talk. Let me start by sharing my screen. Good, so I, um, I think that now you, are, uh, you can see my presentation. If not, just uh, let me know. Uh, so uh, I will uh, like make some little breaks uh, in the middle, like it is divided in three parts uh, and uh, like they, they can be taken just as break if you want or just ask a quick question. Um, so as you see, the title of my talk is Learning Visual Based Agile Flight. That's uh, one of the main research topics in our lab. And uh, 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 my name is again, Antonio Loquercio. I am part of the Robotics and Perception Group. You can see an image of it in here. We are quite a large group. Um, so yeah, we have several PhD students, postdoc, a lot of students, uh, and we work at the intersection of computer vision uh, and robotics. One of the main research questions that uh, is driving uh, uh, basically our research at uh, RPG is what does it take to be as good or even better than human pilots? As you can see in this video, human pilots, they are just amazing. Like they can fly extremely fast in a cluttered environment with both static and dynamic obstacles. And they can do that despite of uh, motion blur, uh, changing lighting conditions, uh, and uh, ch changes uh, in, uh, in the environment, due, for example, by the movement uh, of obstacles. Uh, of course, what we want to do is, uh, yes, get as, as close to them, but uh, maybe in some here, even outperform them. And having a drone that can fly fast is not only cool for the sake of doing it. In fact, it could have a lot of uh, application. Uh, think about uh, how important would be having a drone that could uh, fast explore, uh, very fast, quickly explore an, uh, an environment after a disaster, uh, where uh, time is fundamental uh, to find survivors. Also, agile flight uh, could have um, um, impacts in a lot of many other applications, like, uh, for example, delivery, uh, surveillance, uh, or, uh, for example, uh, inspection. Or doing this fast and autonomously would, uh, would be absolutely important for all of those. However, agile flight is uh, terribly difficult. And uh, the problem is that it raises fundamental challenges uh, in robotics research. Um, I've tried to list some of them. Basically, the biggest one, it, it requires a real-time coupling of perception of control. So you have to see and act at the same time. And uh, these two, they have to be strongly correlated, these two actions. Also, it requires uh, a drone to cope with uh, inaccurate models uh, of uh, its sensor, uh, of its surrounding. Uh, um, so like uh, it's a problem full of uncertainties. It also, it, it has to do everything um, with unreliable perception. So we have seen it in the video before, like when you go fast, uh, images are low quality just because uh, there might be low texture uh, or uh, high dynamic range between the scene or uh, even motion blur just produced by the speed. So the traditional approach of uh, um, attacking this problem, agile flight, is uh, divided in uh, uh, three main blocks. 
perception, planning, control. Perception is the block that converts uh, sensor informations, uh, so for example, images uh, or inertial measurement, in, uh, um, it, it converts them in the state of the drone and a representation of its surrounding, like for example, the distance to the closest objects. This uh, compressed percept perception information is then passed to the planning block that transforms the that transform them in trajectories to follow. For example, to reach a goal while avoiding all obstacles. Once the best trajectory is found, is then passed to the control module, uh, which basically um, keeps the drone on the desired trajectory. This approach uh, has uh, more than 10 years. It's a lot of time that people work on this uh, and uh, it indeed uh, works nice. However, it has some problem. Um, per, first of all, perception uh, has many like mature algorithms that work well, uh, but it suffers a lot uh, during high speed. For example, due to motion blur, all the, all the challenges we have uh, said before. Planning also is, um, I mean, there are good algorithms, but it requires perception to be perfect. Uh, if, for example, your, uh, your estimation of distance between objects uh, is not good, then your trajectories are also not gonna be good. And eventually control um, like needs significant tuning, especially uh, at high speeds. And for this reason, uh, it kind of uh, it didn't make it to like very, very high speed maneuver up to now. Overall, dividing uh, the problem of agile flight in these three blocks completely unrelated between each other um, makes the system brittle. Uh, and the main problem there is that the models do not in interact between each other. They cannot learn between the errors of each other. So another approach uh, has been uh, the, say, the radical approach of taking all the models away and substitute them with uh, a big neural network takes in images or other sensors, output, outputs, um, control actions for the drone. This seems kind of pretty obvious as an approach and instead, uh, and indeed a lot of people have, uh, have done this. But the problem is that uh, like for uh, this neural network uh, to perform well in high speed, uh, in high speed maneuvers, we really need a lot of training data. Sample complexity for this task is extremely hard. That's why the majority of the related work uh, had to make some uh, um, oversimplifying assumption on the drone dynamic. For example, limiting the drone to move on a plane and um, uh, de facto not exploiting his uh, agile uh, um, capabilities. Other work instead solved the sample complexity problem by just training and evaluating in simulation. Of course, this might be interesting, but uh, like uh, limiting robotics to simulation uh, has uh, its own problems. That's why what we do at RPG, one of the main research lines is to bring domain knowledge, so the traditional approach, back into learning-based methods. It is indeed known that uh, union is uh, is strength, and uh, in the in this way they can uh, both benefit from the, their respective advantages. So the um, I'm gonna now go into some of the demonstrators of uh, our research in uh, learning agile flight. I'm gonna first start uh, with uh, uncertainty estimation and then go into drone racing uh, and eventually like our latest work uh, on uh, drone acrobatics. So let's start uh, with uh, uncertainty estimation. So uncertainty estimation in robotics is quite fundamental. And uh, actually, uh, this problem has been kind of overlooked uh, by related work. The main question is here, uh, um, under what condition can a robot trust the predictions of a neural network? It is indeed obvious that uh, a robot cannot always do that. Uh, think about uh, 
um, what could happen if the current observation of a drone, for example, the current observed image is very different from the training ones? Or what if some of the sensors uh, fail? Um, like uh, probably the, the, the neural network due to this corrupted uh, sensor information would also fail and make the drone uh, or the autonomous car crash. For this reason, uh, we have proposed a general framework to compute uncertainty predictions in neural networks. Um, we have made, uh, there are already several, uh, some works doing that, but we have uh, kind of uh, um, uh, basically um, specialized uh, this framework for, uh, for robotics application. And indeed, we show that uh, using prior information about the data, like for example, the sensor noise that is, uh, is available in the, in the sensor specs, uh, one can significantly improve uh, the ability of doing uh, uh, uncertainty estimation. And at the same time, we model all the source of uncertainties in a neural network, specifically data uncertainty and uh, model uncertainty, showing better performance, both theoretically and experimentally, than state-of-the-art methods. Uh, we indeed evaluated our approach on several tasks, both computer vision and control tasks, um, in particular end-to-end -end steering angle prediction, whose video you are uh, looking at it now, then object to future motion prediction, object recognition, and uh, eventually also closed loop control of Aquadotor. So this concludes the first part on uh, uncertainty estimation. Um, We're now gonna back, go to drone racing. Are there any questions? Maybe I can ask a quick one, just, yeah, uh, just from that last video. So you yes. basically, um, I guess your prediction is the direction to steer the car. And then there's some uncertainty of that. Yes. But uh, I, I guess there's, there's also some kind of speed, like whether to slow down or, or to speed up, or is that kind of in a separate part of the challenge here? That's a separate part of the challenge. Okay. It's not shown in the video. Okay, yeah. But okay. that also goes with uncertainty prediction. Yeah, okay. Nice, okay. Good, so yes, I will uh, move forward to deep drone racing. Uh, so before uh, showing uh, results, uh, I want to first introduce the problem. Maybe not all of you are familiar with it. Drone racing is basically the task of flying as fast as possible through a racetrack that, uh, for example, you see here that is composed of a set of gates. Um, the drone, of course, uh, uh, has to make uh, all the, uh, has, has to be fast, but also at the same time, stay on the track and do not crash with the gates. One, uh, the main approach that uh, we, uh, like the, the underlying idea that on which we developed uh, deep drone racing approaches in our lab is, uh, to use a convolutional neural network for doing perception. So if you remember the graph above for doing perception plus planning, so going from the images to the trajectory to follow, and a traditional controller, well-tuned, to uh, follow these, uh, these trajectories. So basically, again, the neural network is represent the brain of the drone, that basically converts uh, like images into intention, where to go, while the traditional controller is the muscle of the drone that basically uh, executes whatever the neural network says. Let me show you some result on this. Um, this, this approach works actually pretty well and, can, uh, and we can have drone flying through a racetrack at significant speeds. Right? For example, you see here, that's uh, 3.5 meter per second on average. Um, actually, this approach was also used uh, to win, uh, um, like two years ago, the, the international drone racing, uh, autonomous drone racing competition. A nice thing about using uh, the uh, neural network for uh, 
for doing prediction is that uh, like your track now can dynamically change so gate could uh, could move as you seen here and the drone will automatically adapt such that so just to say that it does not overfit to partic the particular race track we are flying but it just adapts to whatever it observes Of course, uh, in uh, the, the previous approaches have the problem that, uh, again, they require quite some data. Uh, and uh, most of this data is to be collected in simulation, in, in reality, in the real world. So uh, a, a good uh, like idea in here would be, can we train a neural network in simulation and then just deploy it as is uh, on uh, a real platform? that offers uh, quite a lot of advantages because, uh, for example, uh, we cannot destroy drones at training time. Um, it's very cheap to collect data and uh, we could train basically on whatever we want. Simulation uh, like uh, offers the ability to collect a lot of things and uh, all, all kinds of sensors. That's actually what we did in uh, one of our recent uh, work. We basically trained a neural network for doing drone racing in simulation uh, by doing domain randomization. A domain randomization basically means uh, uh, you change, you randomize uh, everything on the perception side. So as you can see, the sides of the gate, the shape of the gate, the illumination, the, the background, the floor, basically everything that, uh, that could change. Of course, this makes the network kind of invariant to the simulation environment. And indeed, like a network that is trained only on the images that you've seen before, it works on a real drone, on the real drone that you are seeing right now without any fine tuning uh, or data collection at all on, uh, on the real drone. Nice thing is that if you do randomization of illumination condition, you also have uh, robustness against different illumination condition on the real platform. So like, and, and in fact, as you can see in the video, with minimal light, the drone is still able to complete uh, like uh, this uh, is racetrack. That is uh, the conclusion of the deep uh, drone racing part. I'm going to now go into the drone acrobatics. But before, is there uh, any question on, uh, on drone racing? There is one question in the chat here. Uh, how do you compensate for the latency for computation on board? What's the maximum latency? Good. So like uh, the, the nice uh, thing of the approach that I've presented, so using uh, a neural network uh, to produce trajectories and a traditional controller to actually track the trajectory, is that the neural network can be slow. Trajectories don't have to update uh, at more than 10, 15 hertz. And that's more than enough for uh, like more than enough time for a, um, an onboard computer to produce trajectories. The, the traditional controller instead works up to 50 Hertz, going with peaks up to 100, but it's very cheap computationally. Good, so thanks for the question. And uh, I'm gonna now go into the last part of the talk, uh, drone acrobatics and again, some sim to real transfer. Um, that's the only equations that you're gonna see in these talks. Basically, like we are trying to see um, in a bit more uh, formal way, what are the conditions uh, for a neural network uh, to uh, like train in one domain, for example, simulation and test in another domain, for example, reality. And uh, we have shown mathematically that uh, the thing to do is to find input output representations that are domain invariant. So that basically are the same in the two domains. And doing this strictly decrease the gap uh, in performance between the, the simulate, sim for example, simulation and reality. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the main insights here is that these uh, representations uh, can either be learned directly, like for example, as we did before with domain randomization, but they can also be designed. 
uh, using, for example, uh, domain knowledge, expert knowledge. Exactly, exactly what we did in our last paper on drone acrobatics. We used domain knowledge to uh, find some representations of the visual information, so of the images and of the inertial measurement, specifically feature tags and integrated inertial measurement, such that uh, this uh, input would match in simulation and the real world. Doing this, we could train extremely aggressive control trajectories, like for example, uh, um, like loops that you are seeing in here, only in simulation. And then without collecting any data on the real platform, just deploy them. Uh, thank this approach was indeed the first able to do such kind of aggressive maneuvers uh, on uh, a drone like this. Uh, without requiring any external sensing or uh, computing. And uh, yes, as you can see, it can do a little bit of everything. Uh, all the maneuvers uh, requiring ac acceleration up to 3G are absolutely no problem for, uh, for this approach. And of course, one can go all the way down uh, to uh, not only finding uh, input representations that are domain invariant, but also finding output output representations that are robot invariant. For example, what we what we did in here in uh, in this uh, uh, drone at learning to fly uh, by driving is we collected the data on a grounded platform, specifically a car, and then we use this data to train a drone. And the way of doing it, we just found a representation of actions that was independent of the car and uh, the drone, that is forward speed and steering, uh, steering angle. So this uh, concludes uh, my talk. Some uh, short uh, takeaways, uh, maybe the most important thing that I hope you will remember. Um, first of all, prediction uncertainty is fundamental to integrate neural network predictions uh, in, uh, in robotics. We cannot just, we cannot do it without it. Also bridging uh, the gap between uh, um, like learning based and traditional based approaches is very important, offers a lot of opportunities and allows the two methods to uh, benefit uh, uh, from the, their respective advantages. And eventually, knowledge transfer is favored by domain invariant input-output representation. And it allows, for example, to train in simulation and test on the real world, or to exchange data between two different robotic platforms. That's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your attention. Thank you, Antonio. That was great. Um, maybe I can ask uh, kind of a general question, and that is, you know, when, you know, where does this go? So in Switzerland, are we going to see, you know, Zalando and Digitech uh, using these delivery drones? And, and it's really more a question about, you know, what are the regulatory things? Like you mentioned that prediction uncertainty is certainly an important aspect of all of this, but I guess, you know, safety comes in at some point. So maybe you can give a, a little bit of a perspective on where this is going and, and the regulatory angle. Yes, um, so like we are actually in contact with uh, the regulation agency to make this uh, easy. Uh, but one of the main problems that we still have, uh, and uh, like we are actually working on that, uh, is as you said, in ensure safety. So like it might happen that a drone uh, fails for whatever reason. And what we really want to make sure is that even if an important component fails, the drone is still able to safely uh, like go back to the ground and do not kill anybody. And there is actually um, a startup of our lab working on this. They just uh, started, so they're in the beginning phase. But I would say that their work is gonna be kind of uh, very important uh, in Switzerland uh, in the next years. If they will uh, succeed in their mission, we are gonna have uh, drones uh, that deliver things uh, way faster uh, than, for example, autonomous car uh, that take people around. Yeah, okay, yeah, really interesting. Um, 
Any further questions for Antonio, uh, either by voice or by chat? Yeah, in principle, I would like to know if you have experimented with different methods uh, to assess the uncertainty. So uh, MC dropout or variational inference or how? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, unfortunately, I couldn't go into the details of this, uh, like we uh, experimented uh, with uh, like uh, a large set of state-of-the-art uh, baselines. Uh, you can find all of these uh, details uh, in, uh, in the paper. And, and which, but, which was uh, the best one? What, sorry? Which method was the best one to assess uh, the uncertainty? So basically, like uh, um, our approach uh, was uh, like uh, was the one that always had the best prediction uncertainty in uh, in the majority of the task. In uh, in one of the tasks, uh, instead the steering angle prediction, the basically like you could see that. Uh, um, like state-of-the-art methods, they were either very good in predicting uncertainty or very good in predicting steering angle. But none of them were good in doing this at the same time. Our approach instead found a good trade-off. Was good in predicting uncertainty, not the best, but good, but at the same time good in, pred in predicting the steering angle. Okay. Okay, very interesting. Uh, unless there's any final burning questions. Um, I think we'll close proceedings today, uh, uh, here. And so yeah, thanks everyone for joining and especially a big thank you to our four speakers for, uh, for giving us uh, this, this uh, amazing array of applications and, and theory uh, involved in deep learning. So thanks a lot, everyone. <clears throat> thank you very much. Thank you very much, ciao. Bye. Bye -bye.